uh, are not getting injured and uh, and also uh, you uh, you need that you are concentrated in every game that uh, that's, that's uh, very important that uh, that you can keep your level in every game and then you have always a chance to win the goalkeeper were a big part of that business was it for you uh, uh, something that Liverpool needed to 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 address almost in the summer um, I'm I'm very happy that uh, that everyone supported uh, Loris Karius after the after the Champions League final. I think nobody hopes uh, hopes uh, that kind of uh, uh, things to happen to anyone in that kind of game. And and uh, but I think uh, I have seen a few of the friendlies now, and every time he is on the ball, uh, the opposition fans are like uh, making some noises in the stands and. And I think uh, it's for him personally. It's it's very very difficult uh, difficult thing. And maybe maybe he needs a, a new start uh, somewhere. That uh, but he's showing his uh, his courage and mm. his balls that he's still still with us. And and uh, we'll see what's uh, what's happening with him. But uh, but I think uh, I don't know if I was I would be uh, that strong mentally what what he is now. That uh, that I would I would maybe personally. Uh, Look for another club that I can I can make a fresh start. Take on Dortmund uh, tomorrow. It's another game you can see live here on LFC TV as well. All the domestic friendlies, as Sammy alluded to there before, we're on LFC TV, and all of these remaining games you'll be able to see uh, on the app as well. Details uh, via the website as to how you can get involved in that. And if you aren't already a subscriber, you can comment below as well if you want to ask the big fella some questions. Uh, let me throw one at you uh, that has come through from Emily Brown. He says, "Which Liverpool players impressed you most at the World Cup?" Yeah, of course. Uh, Lovren, Lovren went to went to the final, and I think he had a he had a good, good competition that uh, that uh, that he grew. I think uh, along the way to the to the final, and, <clears throat> and he had some uh, some good games. So I would maybe say uh, Desan Lovren. Uh, Tommy Young and Sorison, how do you see this summer transfer window so far? We've actually addressed that one uh, just a, a moment or two ago. Let's get on to Nathan Stevens. Sammy, your favourite moment when you first signed for Liverpool? What would it be? I don't know. It, there's there's many great moments uh, for the ten years, and and uh, maybe I can't pick pick up one one great moment, uh, but I can say a few that uh, maybe the FA Cup final in 2001 uh, was uh, was a great moment, and and the the, the season uh, especially that we won the three trophies. Uh, what, which uh, we we could uh, in the cup competitions uh, to win that uh, that year that was that was great but of course uh, the Champions League win everyone I think every footballer wants to wants to uh, lift the Champions League uh, trophy uh, once in their in their career and uh, we managed to do it in 2005 and that's one of the highlights as well but uh, well, I would say. Uh, Signing for Liverpool was a special thing for me uh, already. That that uh, that uh, Liverpool was my favourite team when I was young, and and uh, that was a great moment to sign. But uh, that was a start for me to to show that I can I can play uh, for the club. Uh, and I, I'm a bit surprised uh, myself that I I stayed that long uh, because uh, it's not easy to to stay this kind of club uh, for a long time. And, and uh, I'm happy that I, I did it for 10 years. So are we, Sammy, so are we. Uh, the crowd that you see behind as well, uh, people have been allowed in for an open training session. We have seen when these sessions have taken place before, Jurgen Klopp tell the crowd to be quiet when they start singing because he's obviously using this as a, uh, principally a, a coaching afternoon. So you might see that a little bit later on, Jurgen Klopp having a bit of a go at the crowd. Um, where the, uh, the title chances are concerned, it's a very popular question on some of them flashing across the screen at the moment. How do you rate Liverpool's chances of, of pushing Manchester City? This season, it's it's important to compete. It's important. I, I hope that we are we are there in the, in the places one, two, three, for the whole season until the end, and and uh, that's that's very important. I think I think every club has the same uh, same uh, object to uh, uh, or target to uh, to improve from last year, and, and everyone everyone will uh, try to strengthen their squads and. And uh, <clears throat> that makes it more difficult to compete as well. That uh, that if you spend uh, 150 million, the other one spend 250. So, so it's like uh, it will be very difficult to compete. But or maybe I would say that if it, it will be difficult to win. Mm. But I hope that we can compete until the till the last game of the season. 
fascinating season uh, to come. We'll let you get a closer look at training in just a second as well. But you mentioned that you've been watching the, the domestic pre-season front. It's always a great time to see players like Curtis Jones making the, 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 the breakthrough. Nat Phillips, who was playing as a centre-back, who was saying yesterday that he came very close to actually coming to this part of America to study and, uh, and come here full-time. Liverpool offered him a trial and look at him now. He's out here as part of the first team. But has there been a, a young player that you've been impressed with that you maybe think could make that breakthrough at least to that first team squad this year? Yeah, I saw I saw now a few of the few of the preseason games, and Phillips looks uh, looks a good prospect, mm. and, and uh, Jones as well. And, and I hope uh, I hope I can I can see more of more of them. And, and uh, like I said before, that this is a good opportunity for them to to show what they can. And, and I know that Jurgen Klopp is not afraid to uh, to play uh, and give uh, give responsibility to the younger younger players if they are good enough. And, and if they show that uh, that they are doing the right things on the field, and, uh, and they they will be uh, will be part of the successful team, uh, he's, he has no problem to to field them and, and put them uh, and give them a lot of responsibility. Okay, uh, we're going to get a little bit closer into this session as that warm down, or warm up rather, just comes towards its end. It will get an awful lot more interesting as well with some shooting drills. Jurgen Klopp just perusing that area at the moment as well so we'll let you take a closer look and Sammy Hoopier thank you very much for your company we'll be back a little bit later on with Robbie Fowler stay with us
That's it.
Thank you. 
They make a picture, nobody has it run so far. Eh? You go all in the crowd, eh? they said they will behave. <laughs> We are live. That means I cannot behave like I behave, but why everybody shows me we are live? Excuse me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully that's been a good insight for you. You've been watching training so far, and as you can see, we're joined by uh, Robbie Fowler, who's been watching with us as well. Uh, good afternoon to you, Rob. Good afternoon, nice Peter. Nice to see you. Um, what have you made of the session? It was a great intensity. Players yeah. will be tired. It must have, it must have been a pretty tough session for yeah, them. Yeah, look, when you, when you get off a plane, I think it's important that you get a, you know, you get a little bit of a, bit of a, a lung opener. Yeah. Um, and look, and to be fair to uh, the staff around here, I mean, we were on top of the players. Uh, I mean, you mentioned intensity, and it was... There was um, there, there was a lot to be had. You know, when you get off a plane, it's important that you get them cobwebs out of you yeah. um, and get yourself ready for, uh, which is what an important tour you know coming up. So um, yeah, it was, it's been a good start. A welcome sight that you might not have seen because they crept behind the cameras was two big inflatable ice baths. They're paddling pools really, but they will be a popular sight for the players. I actually thought they were bowls for my Saturday <laughs> in the morning, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> But they will they'll look forward to getting into them, won't they? Because it's roasting here. It's probably about 35 degrees, yeah. you would say, pitch side. Yeah, but you know you know what as well? I mean, the game kicks off um, 4 o'clock tomorrow, yeah. so it's, I mean, roughly the same time as well. So, yeah, the players, um, 
we'll have to get used to it. Uh, but you know, there's no better feeling than you know putting in a hard session. Uh, you know, getting all that running in um, and then getting into a freezing cold bath, and obviously the importance of that is just to get your muscles ready for the uh, you know for the training sessions or the games, you know, the day after. You know, it's important that you, as much as you know, you, you want them to train properly, you want them to do everything right. It's also the uh, the after that you you've got to do properly as well, which is uh, you know looking after your body in terms of uh, you know getting your muscles right again. Still a lot of time to go in that transfer window, relatively speaking, because a lot can still happen. But the, the squad is, is of a great number at the moment, isn't it? Which will leave competition for places at a point where there's there's no room for anybody hiding at this stage. Because no, decisions are being made about the future. Well, well, exactly. I think we look at last year, and as much as we did have a good season, I think there was times last year where we probably needed a little bit more in terms of squad members. I think Jürgen, yeah, the staff, you know, Michael Edwards and everyone involved with the club uh, you know, at that level have done the right thing and got out, bought more players in, uh, brought them in. Um, and look, it's it's competition for places. And I think we as a club, uh, you know, have cried out for that for a few years. As much as our, you know our first eleven has been has been excellent, I think we probably always wanted a little bit more. I don't think we can have any complaints this year. You know, the window's still open. Uh, Jürgen's come out and said, you know, all the work's done. But look, you, you never know, do you? You really never know. But. Uh, it's important that you do sign players because if you don't sign players, you're not, you're not standing still. You know, you're going backwards. You know, every other club who's in a position where you're trying to get to, um, you know, will we'll be signing players as well. So it's important you do the same. He went over Jurgen Klopp as well to the crowd as he always does on these tour occasions and promises them if they're quiet while the coaching is going on, so the players can hear the coaching staff. He will take his players over to meet them, so there'll be some uh, very happy faces inside that crowd at the moment. Jurgen Klopp giving hugs out, getting hugs back. Uh, it will be a standalone moment in so many people's lives, that, because they're watching Liverpool from afar, they yeah. get the chance to meet them up close. Brilliant, isn't it? Well, well you know what, what I loved about it was, I mean, I, I didn't know, obviously, Jurgen did that with, uh, with obviously the fans and, you know, and whatnot who come and watch the team. Uh, but what was notable, how, I mean, they were a little bit noisy, uh, and then Jurgen goes over there and has a little, a uh, few quiet words, and he had everyone's ear, you know, and it was amazing how quiet it was. And all of a sudden, they've gone quiet, and then um, and all the players over there in the midst of everything. So uh, yeah, he's he's good. He's as good as his word, Jürgen. We'll try and drag a few of them in as well if they uh, they pass us on the way back into the changing rooms or into the ice baths as well. Uh, comment below if you want to ask Robbie a question. Loads coming in for you, Rob. Let's get straight into them. Jordan Summers, who will shine the most next season? Is there an individual you're particularly enthused about? Well, obviously the obvious ones, uh, you know, Mo Salah and um, you know Sadio Mane. I think Mo Salah last year was unbelievable. I think if he gets anywhere near that again, I think he's obviously the uh, the star card. Um, but I think Mane went under a little under the radar a little bit last year because of the excellent form of, of Mane. You know, he's gone to the number ten jersey now, which is. Uh, do you read much into that? Not really, no. But um, you know, a lot of people do. I was never one. Um, I was never one for you know. It didn't really matter the name or the number on the pack. It was always about the uh, the shirt you had done anyway. Uh, but some people will will think a lot more of that. He's got it on, uh, and he deserves to wear. You know, as such a, an iconic number. There's a few iconic numbers at Liverpool, as we all know. Uh, and you've got to be a big player, a big game player. You know, of, of a big character. You know, and I've no doubt that um, this year could be a, an excellent uh, an excellent season for Sadio. And we've talked about uh, teammates out on the pitch. How are you adapting to your new teammates as well? There's no Gary McAllister this year. There's been a, a few new ones brought yeah. in. Luis Garcia takes a rest, Sammy Hoopier and John yeah. Arisa is just creeping behind the camera at the moment. You can come in if you want, John. Well, he loves it, doesn't he's he, John Arisa? Honest, yeah, he? yeah, oh, he's desperate. He's, um, I think anything associated with Liverpool, he think he wants to be a part of it, doesn't he? Um, Do you want to come in, John? Show, show his muscles out. Show his muscles out, yeah. <laughs> I won't, won't tell you what else he's got out on show, but um, yeah. Come yeah. on, it must be the first time you've ever been shy in your career, John. But, come uh, and see us. Yeah, look, yeah, obviously Gary Mack and Gary Mack's obviously gone to pastures new. Uh, I think we'll forgive him because he's gone, obviously gone with Stephen. But um, yeah, it's new. But look, it doesn't really matter who's with us anyway. So you know, we uh, we still come here. We still do our bits. You know, we still meet all the fans, go to uh, you know, certain partner events, and um, you know, so much as I think deep down we'd all love to be out on the train a bit sooner. A bit mm. sadly, Father Time catches up on us, and uh, this is the next best thing. Uh, this is a, a new one on me for, for Robbie Fowler. It, out of the current Liverpool squad, who would you say you most play like? Is there anybody comparable to Robbie Fowler? It would be um, an unfair question to put to you, but still. I, I think it is, actually. Uh, <laughs> would you like me to move on? <laughs> yes, move on. I, don't, I wouldn't even know, actually. Uh, Lewis Rummins, Robbie, if you could go back in time, you just mentioned it, what goal would you like to go back to to score again and why? Uh, I mean, you know what? It's a real audible question, that, because for me, every goal was was the same. You know, whether it was a, you know, a two-yard, you know, five-yard or a 20-yarder, 
I love scoring goals. You know, I got more enjoyment scoring little tappings. So, uh, I mean, that and if we're being totally honest, any goal against Everton or Man United, because of what it meant to the fans was, was probably brilliant. Um, but yeah, I, I, it didn't really, I didn't really have a favourite as such. I mean, I've got a few goals which probably I like slightly better. But um, yeah, I think Tappins was always was always my favourite. I'm just trying to catch a player's eye here to see if we can get know, somebody yeah, in. Divock Origi's hanging about. Should we see if we can get him in? Divock, come and see us. How you doing, mate? Okay. Hi, how are you? It was tough out there. Yeah, oh, yeah. no, okay. it was okay. It was good. It was intense, but good. Yeah, no shoes on. But... How is the, the body bearing up? Because it's so warm out here. I mean, it's not the humidity of previous pre-season tours, but you got off a plane, people will be feeling tired. It looked quite hard out there. That was good. Uh, we wanted to get back on the, on the pitch, and uh, obviously you've seen the support, so it's, uh, it's nice. Nice weather, nice stadium, so it's a good day for us. Yeah. You know about goals, Robbie. He'll be desperate to get one out here, won't he, against the... the the opposition stepped up hugely in class for these next three games. Yeah, I always think it's important that you, when you're playing pre-season, I think it's always good to play you know, high-quality teams because it gives you something a little bit more to aim for. You know, obviously any goal is important, but, you know, difficult to tell you. you know, pre-season games is all about getting fit, uh, obviously, but as a forward, you want to score goals because it gives you that little bit more confidence, you know, leading into the season. What's going on with that, Devon? Yeah, definitely. Um, like you said, it's, uh, it's all about Getting fit, that's the most important thing. But as a forward, of course, you want to score goals. And uh, I think uh, if I can get some, uh, it would be wonderful. Can I, can I ask you a question? Last yeah. year, obviously, you were on loan at Wolfsburg. How was it, how was it like looking at Liverpool's form from, from afar? Well, um, I'd say I was looking at the very um, competitive team. Of course, I've, uh, I've been a long time with this team. And uh, every year, we seem to uh, progress. So... Um, for me, obviously, I love I love the club, I love the support, I love the team. Um, but for for us, um, it was an important step for the club and for me to go and play these games to be stronger to come back. Okay. Everybody's firing though, aren't they, Divock? I mean, we've got Daniel Sturridge who's back amongst the goals again. He looks full of of confidence. When a squad is at the level where you have so much competition, does it bring an extra five ten percent out of everyone at this point in the season? I think it's the best thing that can happen. Um, personally, my career has always pushed me. Um, so I think for this team, uh, with the goals we're setting this year, it's important that everybody is, is sharp and uh, on fire. And I think uh, every preseason I see improvement, and even now I came back and I see a big improvement. So that's good. And when they get to, to Robbie Standard, who's done I that, I was going to say to my age. No, 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 no. You can go out and have a, a drink or a nice meal. The, the players have time to kill. How do you kill it best? Is it Love Island that has been previous years? How do the boys spend their evenings at the moment? <laughs> Well, um, everybody has this individual uh, thing, but we, we tend to like just sit together, uh, talk, uh, sometimes play some ping pong or, or just go to the room or just relax, you know, because uh, we have a lot of sessions as well. So I don't know how Robbie used no, to... I'm actually glad you said that because I can't stand all these programmes anyway, so then I would, might have got you in the headlock if you were talking about uh, Love Island there. <laughs> I think what I'm interested about there is I think what you uh, Divock was saying before, he's always been in, a, in a, a team or in his career where people have pushed him. You look at Belgium where you've got obviously Christian, you've got uh, Lukaku, you know, Yi, now you've got, uh, you've got Mo... Um, you, you've got uh, obviously Daniel Sturridge as well. So you've always had players. Do you do you see yourselves as a similar look to them? What have you got to do to try and sort of get yourself into the side? I think um, first of all, be fit. Um, for me, is the fittest stuff. I've, I've came back from preseason, even if, when you look at the fitness test. So that was important for me. And um, I know my qualities. I know that in football, of course, you have to go in the momentum and score goals. But I'm just trying to do whatever I can, and I know that. Um, I can I can play a part in this in this team. So um, it's just about focusing on yourself and trying to help the team. And uh, I think that's the most important thing. I'll let you go. Get a cold shower, I think. Thanks, 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 Thanks for your time. You. As always, good luck Thanks. this season as well. And a uh, big game for Liverpool to come uh, against Dortmund. And that step up in quality will bring that extra percentage or two out. We interrupt as the gaffer comes yes, over as well. <laughs> How are you doing? Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good session out there. Look tough. Yeah. No, it was only a little session because we had um, we had a quite intense trip today. Yeah? Mm. So we um, didn't know exactly how the boys individually react on that. So it was only passing and a little round at the end. But yeah, obviously it was intense anyway because of the temperature. So it's really warm. Eh? Nice and warm. <laughs> and just and, um, yeah. Just wear a scarf. Just just to yeah, make it a little bit no, warmer. I got it. I got it. <laughs> now we, we checked it. It's official. It's a Charlotte Liverpool. Fan club, I think. Let me see. Yeah, you better walk yeah. alone on that side and here. 
We were talking before, Jürgen, about you walking over to, to the crowd. Can you give us an insight into what you said? I was guessing that you were saying if you're quiet, we'll bring the players over to meet you. What, what happened there when you were interacting with the crowd? No, no. So usually we cannot do anything. That's how it's maybe, maybe the training. It's open training and they, they cannot get signings because pictures, whatever, because you start. Yeah. Then it's, you cannot organize it. They come all to one point and that's really difficult. So you know, then I ask them if you want to have a picture with no, nobody had so far. So we can come in the crowd and we make a picture together and then you can download or whatever. Mm. And, um, but it only works if you behave. So <laughs> that's how the security hated me for that. Um, but we didn't work pretty well and now they have a, we all have a special picture. How well, happy are you feeling as a manager at the moment for, with the squad, with the signings that you've, met, you've been able to make? Obviously really good. It's not a signing or stuff. We have two weeks now, um, we were two weeks on training, which was good. Um, you saw the games more or less well, okay but that's how it is uh, with the intense um, training session before um, but now the boys coming step by step coming back and you know so you come closer um, mm. to the full group and when you have the full group then you can train i'm looking forward to evian obviously when bobby and alison and and the day after tomorrow um, uh, Shakiri will, will join as well here, so and then he's in Avion in full training and all that stuff. So that's good, of course. So I'm, I'm really positive. The weather is brilliant. Uh, we have fantastic circumstances, yes. Um, but it was really intense for the boys. We playing tomorrow, same time, so it will be obviously really warm. It's a good challenge, um, and we have to do so against a really good side, Dortmund. But I feel good. As long as the boys are fit, I always feel, feel good, to be honest. What, what do you look for in terms of pre-season? Do you want your team to be flying every single minute of training sessions, or would you like them to get like a, a gradual fitness until that first game? It's a little bit of a mix of both. It depends on what we are doing. But of course, we have to. We, we, we already are more mature than we have been two years ago. So we have to do so again to make the next step. means uh, in the good moments in the game, we are really good. Yeah. But in the average moments, we still have to be more convinced about our quality, use the quality. It's not about constantly high pressure, constantly. If you cannot, you cannot play counter-pressing in all situations because of the formation is not good. So then step a, uh, a little bit deeper, goes a step deeper and then um, wait there for them and all these different things but it's it's really it's it's a process you you can ask for that but then you do it and then you do that 100% but then your pressing is away so we have to to grow in that role and that's what we try to, to what we try to do how is that? In good moments, we are already, or we were outstanding. We have to be again outstanding. That's not so easy. So the boys need to perform. We need that desire. We need the greed and all that stuff. People are really talking positive about us in a moment. Without, we didn't deliver anything so far. We only had a few preseason games, and they were not brilliant. So it's only about, oh, the team looks good and stuff. But the only, that one thing is the quality you have. The, yeah. the other thing is what you make of it, and that's what we have to, to introduce now. But we can introduce that only in a moment when, when we are all together and that takes a while and that's why, that's why I'm so happy that we now step by step mm. um, get the group together. We're looking forward to it tomorrow. Thanks for coming over. Thank you welcome. You're welcome. Thanks, Gaffer. Thank you. Um, he's driving them, isn't he? He talked about the optimism, which is yeah. clearly there, but every yeah. single day he's driving them to do something else for him. No, he is. And look, I think he's... He, he, he's got everyone, hasn't he? He's got everyone. He's, um, he's an infectious, infectious character. You're bringing out the very best of the players, you know, he just told us what he wants from them, um, and if you if you give your all for him, then I mean he's going to look after you. He really is, and I think he gets the club, doesn't he? He really does, and he gets the players, and everyone uh, playing for him, or everyone here wants to play for him because of who he is and, and, and what he is. Now, just to finish on, Alberto Moreno says he's the ping pong champion. It's not even a contest. He says he's so bored with winning all of the table games that they play, the darts and everything else, that he's, he's considering retiring from that altogether. Who would have won the games oh, in I your day? Be, I would be amazed if he got 11 points against me. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm, I, in fact, I had a Desmond Douglas roll-away table when I was growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will know what you're uh, talking about there, will <laughs> For those who don't know Desmond Douglas, just Google him, I'm telling you. He's, uh, he was the English champion. He was brilliant. Uh, I gave him a game, game once. I had my own bat and everything. Did you? Yeah. We'll set that up, I think. Yeah. There's a feature in itself. Alberto Moreno versus Robbie Fowler as ever. Pleasure to be uh, alongside him and uh, Divo Carigi and Jurgen Klopp who joined us on here as well. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, you can get details on the website.